You're watching Mental Health with Marcy, and I'm Marcy. In today's video, we are going to do another read with me, and so we're going to read my blog called My Key to Confidence, and I wrote this a long time ago, maybe four or five years ago, probably longer, a long time ago, and I will warn you, warning up top, it's very long, so... <laughs> Apparently, if you've read either, um, read, if you've watched either of my other read with me's, you heard me say that apparently I didn't know how to edit back then and I still am in the early days of my blog writing. So please forgive me, uh, for my lack of brevity. Um, but in any case, um, we are going to read through this. I'm going to react as we go along. Hopefully it'll be entertaining for both of us. I have not read this probably since I wrote it or shortly thereafter. So it is again, quite old. Um, I don't know if it says the date on here. It says a date, but I also like uploaded these all to my website at a different time. So um, they're not, the dates are not 100% accurate, but in any case, uh, let's get started reading. My Key to Confidence. According to Sheryl Sandberg's popular book, Lean In, Women, Work, and the Will to Lead, too many women lack confidence. The confidence gap finds that women are less assured than men, according to the Atlantic article. Compared with men, women don't consider themselves as ready for promotions, they'll predict they'll do worse on tests, and they generally underestimate their abilities. Katie Kay and Claire Shipman wrote in the article. According to the same article, confidence matters just as much as competence. If confidence is so important to professional success, why do so many women lack it and what can we do to improve it? I may not be able to answer why so many women lack confidence, but I can share with you my personal experiences with confidence and my key to achieving it. So it's so funny, I like ask a question, I'm like, why do so many women lack confidence? And then I just like, I don't know how to answer this. So I'm just not going to. So anyway, it's funny. Um, I kind of set it up like I'm going to talk about like women in general, but really all of my blogs, oh, sorry, that was the microphone. All of my blogs are coming from my personal experience. And so I should always like caveat these with like, this is my experience, even though I might have equated it to be like everyone's experience. It's mine, and this is like highly my opinion about what um, what the key to confidence is. So let's find out what I think it is. So it's not what you know. What is the key to confidence then? It's not what you know. I just said that. It was a header, and then I said it again, so that's fun. You would think that the more you know about something, the more confident you will be about it, right? For example, if you go to school and get a degree in engineering, you should be more confident about working as an engineer, right? Yes and no. Yes, what you learned about engineering in school is important in pursuing a career in engineering. You need the basic understanding knowledge of the subject in order to be successful. However, when you get to your actual job, you aren't going to be tested about what you learned about engineering from your classes. You're going to be expected to use the skill set you built through your education in order to meet the expectations of the job. That's because education is about building up critical skill sets, not just memorizing facts. When you think back to all the things you had to learn in high school, for example, I'm sure you can come up with a list a mile long of things you never use in your adult life. Past my educational experiences, I've never had to use the quadratic formula, repeat dates of wars in history, or write a literary analysis on a fictional character. While I've never had to use these items specifically, they have been invaluable in contributing to my personal and professional success. For example, by learning the quadratic formula and how to use it, I developed critical thinking skills. I don't even think I know what the quadratic formula is anymore. <laughs> Apparently at the time, I knew what it was. No, I have no idea. So clearly I haven't used it. Um, but I developed critical thinking, such critical thinking that I don't know what the quadratic formula is. Any math nerds, just drop it down below in the chat. 
if you want to. So anyway, um, by learning dates of wars and history, I curated an appreciation for the past and how our history fits into current events. By writing a literature literary analysis of a fictional character, I learned how to write and structure an argument. Critical thinking, cultural understanding, and the ability to write are all things of monumental importance in my adult life and professional career. My education has allowed me to develop these critical lifelong skills, which are far more important than just what I know. Yes, education is important, and we should all devote more time to learning and knowing more. However, you won't be successful in any career if you rely on what you know to if you rely only on what you know to be confident in today's day and age everything is constantly evolving so you'll never be able to just know something and call it good for example technology is constantly changing so you have to adapt as new technologies become available in our workplace and i do tend to agree somewhat i think i discount a little bit the impact of education, even though I said it's about building critical skill sets, I think like there are some things that you should know and that are good to know and being confident. Um, so I feel like I discounted a little bit, but so far this is not as controversial as my last blog. So I will take that as a win, um, but let's keep going. A silly example is upgrading from one version of Windows to the next. You might be very familiar with Windows 7 and know everything about how to use Windows 7. Windows 7? <laughs> it's like so old. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is really dating um, dating my, uh, my blog. But now your companies, all your company's computers are being put on Windows 10, a system you don't know how to use since it didn't exist before. How are you going to possibly adapt? You're going to be able to figure it out because you learn the skill set of how to operate computers and how to problem solve. It doesn't matter if you don't know the specifics of how to operate Windows 10 because you can learn it. If you approach everything with a can-do attitude, you'll be far more successful professionally and in life in general. That's a pretty bold statement. Just approach everything with a can-do attitude. I don't think that's... Um, so much as like, you're just gonna be successful in life. But I think it can help if you have that kind of like, not only positive attitude, but like willingness to, you know, get something done. Um, it can, I think it can help you. Um, I don't think it's the end all be all, but I think it definitely can help. For example, if someone comes to you with a question or task to complete that you don't know how to do, you could just tell the person that you don't know and go on with your day. Or you could tell them that you don't know the answer just yet, but you will help them figure it out. This willingness to learn and adapt to unfamiliar situations is what will set you apart and set you up for professional success. On the other hand, if you are only comfortable doing what you know, you are limiting your potential for growth. You'll be stuck doing the same thing for the rest of your professional career because of your inability to adapt to unfamiliar situations. Step outside your comfort zone and you will find that you are able to do things you never even thought possible. Growth comes from doing things that make you uncomfortable. And I don't know who said that. Um, that has to be some sort of like famous saying, right? I feel like that's I said before. Maybe I should look it up, but I'm not going to. Um, but I feel like... Um, it's definitely true in terms of like adaptability, at least in my career now, I've had a lot of, um, change happen just across the organizations and changing jobs and things like that. And so, um, it's definitely been really important for me to be adaptable. So I feel like that is still, um, relevant today. So again, so excited. I'm not, so, well, I don't think it's that controversial yet. Maybe you can tell me if you think it's, it's a controversial opinion, but let's find out um, what else I have to say. It's not experience. If the key to confidence isn't what you know, then it must be your experience, right? The more time you have put into a certain job or field, the more confident you will be about, uh, about it, right? 
Yes and no. Similar to what you know, experience is important in building a solid reputation for yourself. Experience is important in demonstrating your past abilities and successes that are going to be indicators of your future success. However, just because you haven't done something before doesn't mean you can't do it and shouldn't be confident in your abilities to achieve it. So many times I've heard people doubt their abilities because they are only this rank or not as experienced as so-and-so. I've even been guilty of this on of this myself on occasion saying I'm just a college student or consultant, so what do I know? This is a toxic mindset to have which ultimately limits your potential for growth. Don't count yourself out just because you don't have decades of experience in the field or might not have the specific expertise needed for the role. You might not know how to do the job now, but can you learn it? If the answer is yes, then don't limit your possibilities just because you think you you don't think you have enough experience to go for that job. Believe in the awesome skills that you have curated over the years and show your potential employer how you can learn and do anything you set your mind to. Because technologies and industries are constantly evolving, employers aren't just looking for employees who know things and have experience in certain fields. They're look, looking for employees that can adapt, who can quickly adapt, learn new things, and even bring new ideas to the table. Yes, it is still important to know things and have experience in order to be successful professionally, but don't let your lack of knowledge or experience stop you from pursuing opportunities. You'd be surprised how a can-do attitude and excellent work ethic are far more valued in today's job market. And so I would have to say, like, you still need experience. And I think that's kind of like the big caveat is that it's not that it's not all of these things, it's that it's not the only thing, right? The key to confidence isn't, it's not just what you know, it's not just your experience, it's not just whatever all these other things I'm gonna say that it's not, um, but it seems like it's more of like a combination of it, but I did relate a lot to the idea of like the imposter syndrome of, uh, not feeling like I'm good enough or like not feeling like I have enough qualifications to apply for a job. Like for example, I recently changed jobs and when I was applying for jobs, um, I would look at a role and be like, oh, I don't know how to do every single thing on here. Um, which is funny because one, um, the job I have now, specifically I like knew how to do every single thing on there except for one thing, video editing which is interesting because I make YouTube videos and I'm like, I don't know how to edit videos, which I mean, you can tell me I don't know how to edit videos. I'm not that good. Um, but it just made me laugh because um, just looking back and thinking, okay, I had that imposter syndrome. I've had that doubt in myself, but like, obviously I could do it. And I also even had experience doing it. And yet I still, um, still doubted myself. So I do believe there is a lot of doubt and imposter syndrome, um, at least still in my life. Ah, stop touching the mic, Marcy. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so what do we have? Oh, look, I tell you what it is in the next paragraph. I pre-read. I mean, I only just read like two sentences, but this is exciting. Are you ready for it? Are we doing like a t Taylor Swift thing? Are you ready for it? Anyway. Okay, I'll shut up now. But not really, because I'm going to keep reading and like keep talking the rest of this YouTube video. Okay, a newspaper success story. If the key to confidence isn't what you know or your experience, then what could it possibly be? My key to confidence is to fake it until you make it. <gasps> wow, revolutionary. That's not in the, I just added that. That might sound cliche. <laughs> See, I was like, yeah, it does. But it's completely true in my experiences because apparently my experiences are everyone's experiences, obviously. So many times in my professional career, I have had absolutely no idea what I was doing, but I just faked it until I made it and no one ever knew the difference. Maybe, maybe they did know the difference. Who knows? Um, for example, when I showed up to work as the print desk manager for the Columbia Missourian, my senior year of college, I literally had no idea what I was doing. For this job, I was supposed to manage the print budget, design newspaper pages, write print headlines, proof print pages, oversee all the page designers and copy editors and copy edit news articles. That's a long sentence. 
There's a lot of things I was supposed to do, apparently. I had no idea how to do any of these things <laughs> except copy edit news articles, but I faked it until I made it. I had managed the content budget of my high school newspaper, but this was completely different at a city newspaper. We had a 3 p.m. budget meeting I had to attend to go over what the content of the newspaper would be that evening, but as news happened, things would change and I would have to adjust. I had no experience dealing with breaking news coverage and how to reflect that in a print newspaper under a daily midnight deadline. Similarly, I had no idea how to design newspaper pages because I hadn't taken the news design class yet. I had laid out a few pages at my high school newspaper, but again, this was completely different. I love how I'm just like, oh, I have no idea how to do these things. Actually, I've done them before. Like, that is just definitely like discounting all of my experience and what I've done. Um, but yeah, I'm just like, I have no idea how to do this. And then I'm like, actually, I do have, I do know how to do this. Come on, RC, get it together. <clears throat> I had to conceptualize a design and execute it in computer software I was unfamiliar with. Again, I used InDesign in high school. Like, I wasn't an expert at it, but I had used it. So, anyway, I'm just going to argue with myself. I also had to write print headlines. In my past semester of copy editing at the newspaper, I had maybe worked on the print desk twice and wrote a handful of print headlines. I also had to proof all the print pages of the newspaper, which I only had done a handful of times working on the digital copy desk. On top of all these new responsibilities I didn't know how to do, I had to oversee the fellow page designers and copy editors. I had no idea how to do page design myself or write print headlines, but I was supposed to be teaching these things to others? Yikes. I will never forget that first Monday night that I was in charge of the print newspaper. It was the first day of the semester and I was terrified of failing. But it turned out just fine in the end. The newspaper got out on time without major incident, and I survived. Being thrown into managing the print desk was the best learning experience I ever had. I was forced to figure it out, and I did figure it out eventually. My faking it turned into making it. By being confident in my abilities and never doubting myself, I quickly came up to speed and could do the job just fine in time. If I had let my lack of knowledge and lack of experience control me, I would have never had the guts to do something, try something completely new and unfamiliar to me. Really wasn't that new and unfamiliar. I had like run like a high school newspaper, but um, anyway. I would have never been able to realize how strong I really am and how I can succeed in anything that I put my mind to. I would have never realized my love and passion for management had I not jumped in without fear. Yes, I could have completely crushed and burned in the job, and I think sometimes that does happen for some people, but that's no reason to stop yourself from pursuing something new. It might not work out fabulously, but if you don't push, you sh push yourself to try, you'll never know. Wow. I do remember um, very clearly um, working at the newspaper and... Um, I do remember not knowing what I was doing, um, designing pages and doing print headlines and things like that. Um, so it is just like bringing me back, bringing me back to my, my newspaper days back in the day. But anyway, we have another success story. So many success stories. I'm just so confident, don't you know? Anyway. A proposal success story. While I might not have known much about how to be a print desk manager, at least I had a little bit of experience working on my high school newspaper. That's what I said. I guess I'm the same person. So I'm just arguing with myself. But I did. I said that. I had some experience. Anyway. Starting my first job out of college as a proposal coordinator for CGI's Financial Solutions, I really did have no idea what I was doing. One of my first learning experiences as a proposal coordinator was facilitating conference calls. So in all my previous jobs I've worked at prior to working at CGI, I talked with all my colleagues in person, so there was no need to hold conference calls. I had never joined a conference call prior to CGI, much less facilitated one. This is so crazy just to like think back to that, that like joining a conference call and facilitating them was like a thing. And now it's just like so commonplace, you know, in the last eight years I've been in the workforce, like that's just like what you do. 
you just like facilitate conference calls and you're on them. And it's just so crazy to think little me was like, I don't know how to do this. It was, it was, it is more difficult, like facilitating one, like with a group of people than it is just joining one. But, um, I had to learn. So when I started the job, I joined a few of my colleagues proposal conference calls, listening in and trying to learn the etiquette. Within a few weeks of starting my role, my former boss went on her honeymoon and I was on deck to start coordinating my own proposals and running my own conference calls. I had no idea what I was doing, but <laughs> I am like imposter syndrome hard here. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. I definitely um, don't feel like there's a lot of confidence in this writing. But I just opened my bridge and went with it, pretending I knew exactly what I was doing. Okay, Marcy. Soon enough, the faking it turned into making it. Three years later, I am a conference call pro. Ooh, look at me. Conference call pro. I've even made presentations on how to effectively facilitate meetings and taught multiple people how to do it. I have run so many conference calls that I find my conference call habits seeping over into my personal life. On my calls with family members, I've even recapped the meeting and reiterated next steps. <laughs> oh, have I? I do find that when I like send emails, um, kind of from like a work perspective, then I'll be like, please see attached. If you need any additional information, let me know. Thanks, Marcy. Like I'll send that to like a family member. It makes me laugh. Um, I am so comfortable facilitating conference calls now that it's crazy to think I was ever afraid of them in the first place. It was uncomfortable at first while I was still learning, but it forced me to grow professionally. In addition to facilitating conference calls, I had to learn how to coordinate proposals. Prior to interviewing at CGI, I had literally no idea what a proposal even was. I can remember my first interview for this job with my former boss when she explained how banks will send us questions to answer in order to get business. It was all Greek to me then, but then I started the job and was forced to start coordinating proposals myself very quickly because capacity dictated it. Within a few quick months, I mastered proposal coordination and required little to no oversight of my work. Within four months of starting the role, I single-handedly trained the newest member of our proposal team. A year later, I became proposal lead and oversaw all the team's proposals. Now three years in, I'm the proposal manager of the entire team. Did I know what I was doing the entire time? Absolutely not. I just faked it and figure it out along the way. <sighs> you think that works? I guess. I just, um, I don't think it works in every situation. You just like fake it. Like if you wanna be like a doctor you sh or like a surgeon, you should probably like not just fake um, what you're doing. Be like, oh, do I know how to cut this person open? But anyway, in my case, I had a little bit more leeway because it's not life or death. But anyway, <coughs> excuse me. A few weeks ago, a member of another business unit actually referred to me as a proposal guru as I was explaining our proposal process to her. I confidently told her what we do, our templates, our, the collaboration tool we use, and how to find generic answers. This was a moment that I realized I had really made it. Made it. In quotation marks. All the things my boss had explained to me in my interview are second nature to me now. I started out literally not knowing what a proposal was, and now I'm a so-called proposal guru. Another area where I had no knowledge or experience was our IT solutions that we are selling with our proposals. I came into my job as a proposal coordinator not only knowing nothing about our specific CGI solutions, but also knowing nothing about the financial services industry in general. I was sitting on calls listening to subject matter experts discuss a solution we were going to propose to the client, not really understanding any of the things they were talking about. Fast forward three years and I understand most of the functional technical discussions around our solutions on conference calls. I doubt that. <laughs> I can read proposals and provide substantive edits. I'm able to write content myself and provide feedback on the rest of the proposal response. I can even explain our solutions and what they do to other people to a certain extent. I'm still no expert. Okay. That seems a little more reasonable. I was like, I am no like expert on all these like financial solutions by any means. Um, so how was I able to come so far in such a short period of time? I faked it until I made it. I listened and I learned as much as I could from everyone along the way. And then eventually it just clicked. 
Of course, I still have plenty to learn, but I didn't let my lack of knowledge or experience stop me from doing a role I was ultimately very successful in. Look at me, Miss Proposal Guru. Again, it's been, it's been a long time since I've done proposals. How many years? Five years, maybe? Yeah, this, this would have been five years ago. Um, if I was three years in, um, it's my current role. Current role at the time. Um, wow, that was a that was a minute ago. It's been a long time since I switched it over to internal communications um, after I did proposals. And so definitely liked that a lot better. But anyway, that's that's unrelated to this article. So, OK, is there such a thing as overconfidence? Yes, there is such a thing as overconfidence. You can't just be recklessly confident, faking it, and never follow through and make it. In order for the fake it until you make it advice to work, you actually have to make it eventually. You can't just pretend forever that you know what you're doing without actually learning how to do it and following through. You can't bank on empty confidence and think it's going to carry you through your life. You might be able to get away with it for a while, but it will eventually catch up to you. Additionally, you should strive to be confident, not cocky. It's one thing to believe in your abilities and portray an image of confidence to your colleagues. It's another thing to be constantly bragging about how awesome you are. No one wants to be around someone who is cocky, so make sure you aren't crossing the line over confidence into cocky. Last page. Phew, this is a long one, right? Actually, fun fact, this is not the longest blog um that i have so a few of these videos will be longer but i will try to mix up some other videos in between so we don't just like read vlogs for like ever um but i think this is fun anyway let me know if you think it's fun in the comments if you're like i hate this you can also type that that's fine too okay why does it matter if you're confident anyway now that we've gone over my key to confidence fake it until you make it how many times have I said this in this article? Is that like, that should be a drinking game now. Why does any of this matter? Who cares if you are confident as long as you get your job done? You don't have to be confident in order to be successful professionally, but if you are confident, you're going to open up a lot more doors for yourself. If you are confident in your abilities, you are going to be more likely to try new things and take advantage of opportunities, which will allow you to grow professionally and move up the corporate ladder. It's okay if you don't want to move up and be a manager, but confidence still comes in handy at all levels. Your colleagues will see you as more competent, trustworthy, and likable, according to the Atlantic article. Plus, you will feel better about yourself and be more empowered if you are confident in your abilities. You really can do anything you set your mind to, so don't limit your potential by lacking confidence. Dun, dun, dun. So dramatic, I know. Um, but yeah, actually, I don't know, maybe I'm just like looking back on it now, but I think it's a pretty good blog. I mean, I think it's one of my better ones, actually. Um, I do like generally believe a lot of it. I don't think you can just fake it until you make it, but well, I don't believe you can do that forever, but I did caveat that in there that you do actually eventually have to learn and you can't just keep faking it. But I do think that women especially um, should be more or can be more confident in themselves. Not every woman is not confident, um, but I feel like a lot of us have imposter syndrome and we just think we aren't good enough and we have to have every qualification in order um, to do something and so I hopefully at least this helps a little bit with um, any of your kind of confidence issues or maybe you have a new idea or maybe you're just like, I just want to make fun of Marcy because this is her five years ago um, reading her blog. Any and all um, feedback is welcome. So in any case, thank you so much for watching and stay well, my friends.